Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to find a new Coveless application development platform, whether you want to build mobile or web apps, and you want to do it without code at a really affordable rate or even a one-time fee, stay tuned. This video is going to be doing an in-depth review and first impression of Gapsy. So before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. All right, so jumping straight in, this is gonna be a unique video that's different from some of my others. So in the past, I've reviewed quite a number of different Codeless application builders. Today's video, I'm gonna do a first impression, and then I'm gonna do what I'm gonna call the good, the bad, and the ugly. And basically, in the first impression, we're gonna cover the pricing, what we see on the website, some of my initial concerns. Then when I do the good, the bad, and the ugly, I'll explain what I like about the platform and kind of end with why I personally am choosing not to move forward with this. But I wanna specify and highlight I, at the time of filming this video, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, shape, or form. I just have set up an account, and I want to explain that this is not a fit for me. It doesn't mean it's a fit for you, so I'm going to try to make this impartial. I'll highlight what parts of the video are fact, what's speculation, etc. So, let's jump straight into the website. Going to gapsy.com, you'll see that when you land there, it's a pretty standard-looking website. I'm not a huge fan of the layout and the fact that you have different sized options up here you have one two three and then down here slightly larger is option four and then coming soon it's just it's not the best web layout but again not a huge deal it also shows the platforms it replaces which is kind of cool you'll see that they do not have monthly fees which is really interesting so you'll see that we have a couple of different options to choose from and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump into the app builder portion. So gapsy.com slash app builder. When we are looking at this page here, you'll see that we have the ability to create no code Android and iOS mobile apps. So I think that they have a web app builder because I've seen that you can actually view the apps from a website. So that should be an option as well. Now <clears throat> you'll see the steps. You have to choose a lifetime deal or choose a deal create the layout, add features, publish the app. Pretty straightforward. Now, when you look at their feature list, it is very, very impressive to me at least because I've noticed that typically app builders that have more data-rich features tend to be on the pricier end, especially ones that have social options. So you'll see we start off with an appointment planner, calendar, content lock so that you can require member sections. Then they have monetization features, which is huge for a lot of people. And you'll see we have things like Taxi Ride app, Scratch Cards, iFrame. So you can basically embed your website if you wanted to. And then communication features. The big one for me was the social wall so that you can create your own social media system. We'll go into detail on that one later. But the you also have push notifications and local features as well. And then they list some additional features down at the bottom. So you'll see they have a couple of people that talk about their platforms. And then we land in the pricing section. So I'm going to cover what I like and what I dislike here. You'll see that you have the frequently asked questions. And <clears throat> the concern that I have when it comes to this is when you have data-rich applications, such as a social function, I wonder how a one-time payment of $167 can support an application with 10,000 users or 100,000 app downloads, I question how you can basically do that. Because if you have 100,000 users sharing images, that's going to get very expensive very fast. But at the same time, that is purely speculation. So I just want to make that point. So you'll see with each of these, you get iOS, Android, and web app. And then you'll see the options. Basically, the primary limit is the number of users, notifications, and push notifications. But you do get webhooks in the pro version, which is going to be useful for a lot of people, and the ability to add ads. And then you get the native website integration for the business option. So I'm going to show you where my first concern came into play when signing up for this app platform. So you can click Buy Now. And when you do this, it'll take you to some kind of a page like this. So you'll see when we go to purchase this particular package, it's $167.
But as you're scrolling down, you'll see we have this lifetime updates. So the first concern that I have is that you are adding on $67 to get access to all new features and layouts. That's not something that's included. It's also not highlighted on this page at all. So if you want that, then you have to pay a little bit more, which in the grand scheme of things is not that much. And then you also have the ability to add a second mobile app. Now this part is confusing to me because it says two lifetime deals are better than one. If you buy the lifetime updates and customer update above, you'll also have that for your second mobile app. I was confused because I don't understand if this means I need to purchase a second mobile app and this will cover it, or if this fee allows me to basically duplicate everything in the cart. So for example, if I click this, you'll see it's reflected in the order summary, but I don't know if I add this, does this mean I'm getting these two twice or just the updates and I have to do one more of these? It can be a little bit confusing. So once you do all of this, you'll sign up for your account and you'll click place order now, noting that they have a 30 day, no questions asked, money back guarantee. So I went ahead and signed up for this account and what I purchased, I'll show you on the screen, was this here. So basically I purchased the pro lifetime deal and lifetime updates for around $234. So I will close this. And now I want to show you another couple of concerns that I had when looking at this platform. So when you go to gapsy.com slash special deal and you scroll through, you'll see a very, very similar page to what we've pretty much already looked at. But when we scroll down here, you'll see you have a yearly deal and a one-time deal where we have 197 yearly, 397 one-time, and you'll see an old 57 a month price. So I'm a little bit concerned about which pro, like what's the main deal, what's the actual deal, what's the promo. And when we go to the free trial page here, you'll see we have a basic plan and a premium plan. And the premium plan, which I wanna highlight the price because it's gonna come up later, was just a little bit confusing to me when we're looking for this one-time deal here. And it's also highlighted on every single web page, but you still have the ability to purchase this if you want. So you'll see when we click here, it takes us to a different page entirely. So just a little bit confusing. Again, it could just be that they're running promos, so that's not a huge deal. So now that we've covered the first impression, uh, again, I was a little bit confused, but overall I'm willing to overlook some of that. So now let's jump into the app builder itself. So when you get to the home page of the dashboard, you'll look at basically something like this. Now, <clears throat> this is where I'm starting to get another couple of, just I'm getting a little bit concerned. So the first thing is installs. You'll see codeless fix, and then it has 42. And then we have 249 visits. And when we hover over here, you'll see we have 249 visits yesterday. I'm assuming that's me. But the installs are a bit of a concern because when I go to this app in the Google Play Store, it hasn't been released yet. When we go to publishing overview, you can see it was rejected. And this, just to note, I didn't select all of the options correctly for the data collection portion. So that's not a reflection of Gapsy. But the concern that I had was we have this application here, but it hasn't even been uploaded or it's not in the Google Play Store. Additionally, you'll see we have no acquisitions. No users have actually downloaded this application yet. So it is a little bit of a concern that when we go to our publishing overview, we don't have anything, like we don't have any users that have actually downloaded and installed the application. Again, we have internal testers that we can send this to, but if we go to reach and devices, you'll see as we're scrolling through, we have an install base in production of zero, zero, and then right here, we're seeing installs by Android version. So it's a little bit confusing as to where this application is potentially being installed at because I haven't installed it and the test list is only myself. So it is a little bit concerning. I'm assuming, and again, this is just an assumption, but when we go to manage, I'm assuming that there's a virtual machine somewhere 
that's running these on an Android app. But again, just a guess. So I just wanted to show that because that's a concern since we're on a plan that limits the number of installs. If it's saying you've already installed on 49 devices, but we're not even in production, and I personally haven't installed it, I'm a bit concerned there. Now, looking past that, let's look at the app builder and give you an overview. We're gonna now start the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, it's a very clean interface. When you scroll through, it's pretty straightforward and easy for someone who hasn't built an app before to understand. You have your app on the right and all of your functionality in the middle and then your menus on the left. So you start out with your design. If we can look at clicking change template, you'll see you have quite a few different options. So you'll see this is not like a low code builder like AppGyver where you have a little bit more functionality. You're basically choosing from some presets. The good thing is it's less technical. The bad thing is it means you do not have the ability to make the app as custom as you may want it to be. Now, once you have your template, you choose the layout. These are a little bit confusing because sometimes they seem to work together and sometimes they don't, but I chose the taxi layout for both screens because I think it looks relatively clean. You have your hamburger menu, all of your pages here. Once you've done that, you have your home page settings and image, your currency, your font, and then once you scroll through this, you then go to your colors. Now, a couple of things to note that I really like about this since we're talking about the good first. There is a ton of customization options. You can see on the colors page, you can edit quite a few different things. You can create your own custom theme with colors and the text, and then you have this advanced CSS option down here that you can do even more with if you would like. So, so far, the design portion of this app builder is pretty feature rich in my opinion. Now, <clears throat> let's go to the actual features. So, this part reminds me a bit of Appy Pie and the builder that I used a couple of years ago, so I haven't used them as much lately, but it's very, very similar. And what I mean by that is, right here, you have all of the pages. These are each of the features that you can add. So to add something, you simply click it. So if we wanted to add in maps, you click maps, and then it will appear up here in your menu. You'll see it'll also appear over here in your preview. And you can really just change any settings when you select it right here. Now we can click here to delete it. And the majority of the time, the application on the right will update, but you do have the ability to click see changes. Now, at the time of filming this video, yesterday I clicked on preview on my phone. It gives you a QR code to download it. I was using a Z Fold 4, and it said that this was not the current version, or it was basically built for an older model, which isn't a huge deal. But again, I don't think that they're keeping up as much as they could be. But putting that aside, you do still have this preview here, which works out pretty well for taking screenshots for uploading to the app stores, and also just for general testing. <clears throat> so if we click on the home page, just to see some of the features and functionality, you'll see we have the ability to add sections, which is a bit limited here. For example, when we scroll through the application, like on the right, if we scroll down, you'll see that we have a video here, which unfortunately won't play and we scroll through, the actual video is this URL here. So we'll paste it in just to show you that it is an accessible video, um, but it doesn't play here. So we would just have to assume it'll work on our actual phone. We have some text, we have a link to the channel, which is a button. So the button is these three options here. It doesn't look like you can currently link to internal pages but I do like your browser choice options. Then we have another button, and then we have a slider, which I really like. I wish you had a little bit more control over how much of the pictures could be viewed, because when you add the pictures, it looks like you're technically able to crop them, but it's a little bit confusing and doesn't look like it's showing exactly what I would expect. So with that being said, overall, still pretty feature rich. When we go to my account, you'll see we have tons of settings. And I'll start to speed up a bit here and highlight the, the cool features. So the social wall is pretty big. It has the ability to like, you can comment, and you basically just 
add it. It's, it's pretty simple. When you add this feature by clicking it, most everything is already there. You have a moderator section, you have a design section, you have a settings section, and posts. So when you're here, you see once you've logged in, you can see the pictures, you have a My Account button, you have the My Account button there, which is basically going to allow you to post, and then you have the ability to like and comment. So it looks very similar to other traditional social media walls. I just wish you had the ability to manage things a bit more and have categories and things like that. So I added another section, which is a folder. So when you set up your folder, it's a little confusing, but basically you have your feature list here and you click what you want to add to the folder. So I have three custom pages. So if you click on one, you'll see we have a page right here. Now, when we go back to our feature pane, we'll look at a couple of the other features that they have and then we'll try to start wrapping up the good section. So the good here is there's a really cool messaging feature that you can add, and then there's a classified section. Now there's good and bad to this. If you use the actual classifieds section that they have, it looks like it's tied to a map, which I don't like. I would like it if there was an option to have something where you could just set it based on any user wanting to help another user. So as we scroll through, you'll see we have different options here. So if we were to go to kind of scroll through and you'll see we have like a community option and just a bunch of other options. If you look at the classifieds, it's just a little bit confusing. So <clears throat> you'll see in the classifieds option, we will go back to our home page and click on classifieds and you'll see we have two categories within this. So I've built this out and basically it's just different topics that people can talk to each other about. So you, I haven't really used this too much, but again, there's other options that you can set up. So you have the cab ride functionality, calendar appointment pro. Again, I, I think the, the good here is this is a very, very impressive feature rich application. Now let's start going into the bad. Now, before we do that, I do want to highlight a couple of other things to note, which includes the app analytics section. And then you'll see you have quite a bit of analytics to look into. And then you have your feature analytics as well, which is also pretty cool. You have some settings, including ability for controlling domain and email, advanced and API keys. And then you also have a messages and promote option. So now let's go to the features and highlight starting the bad. So when we scroll through, I had some issues yesterday, and I believe it was the day before, where I was trying to add this real-time chat. So when you add it and you click it, you'll see an error occurred while loading the feature. This happened yesterday, and I reached out, and someone from the Gapsy team told me that basically it was odd. I should try to delete it and re-add it. Regardless of what I do, the feature just doesn't seem to work. Another odd part about this particular one in, is it starts to show this white square, almost like it's expected not to work. But when I add other pages, for example, if I want to add in source code, which I think is a really cool option, I can click the page and edit it without any issues. And I can also delete it without any issues. And then you'll see when we scroll through that the source code option, it's not grayed out. Everything still shows as it did before, but I still cannot add real-time chat because when you add it, you get an error occurred even before you click it. I'm sure this is something that's a bug that could be fixed pretty easily, but that's a pretty big feature that I know people would want, and I haven't tested out all of these to see if they all work. I've just seen most of them work for me so far. So that's part of the bad. And then again, the other bad portion is when it comes to app analytics, I've been the only person working on this application. And now we're seeing here total installs 350. I have no idea what that means or why that's even possible. So I don't know where that information is coming from. And total visits, I'm assuming that's me because I haven't distributed this to anyone. So as you can see, it's already a little bit concerning that we're seeing, for example, iOS installs 
I don't even have a Apple developer account right now. So I don't even know where this is coming from. I'm assuming this just means that somehow someone is accessing this from an Apple device, which I don't understand because I haven't distributed this application to anybody. So at this point, the bad bordering on ugly is I don't feel like I can trust any of the analytics here at all. And again, I don't have an Apple developer account right now. I had one previously, but I'm not using it and I haven't published this to Apple at all. So even if somehow people found it on Google Play in the test beta version, there shouldn't be iOS installs. And if this is traffic from Apple, it should show web traffic and not installs. The other concern is obviously the user localization. I don't know if this is live or not, but um, if there are people using this, let's just say in Asia, for example, I'm assuming that that is a virtual machine that's running the application, which is what you see when we're editing it over in this side. But again, I could be completely wrong. So that's just very confusing and difficult to understand your user base. Now, going to the remainder of the bad. So when I signed up for this platform, I reached out to ask some questions on if they have an affiliate program. And I had an individual there that reached out and said that they have a couple of reseller options and some other things, and they quoted me some prices. It just seems kind of like Appy Pie in that it was very salesy. And when I raised concerns about some of the features, it seems like those were kind of disregarded, like the chat function, for example. They said that it should just work when it's on the phone, but I don't have a way to test that until I publish it. So just some things like that were a little bit concerning, and the fact that they glossed over that and continued to focus on, hey, sign up, etc. So finishing off the video with the ugly and my final concerns and why I'm not moving with this platform anymore is... <clears throat> This part is speculation. I don't understand how they could afford to manage everyone's data with a feature-rich application like this for a one-time fee. And it really concerns me about, can this support 10 or 100,000 users using the platform for just $200 as a one-time fee? So that part's a bit concerning. I don't understand how many users could use the app concurrently. So if you want your app to be really, really big, and you want to have a lot of people using it. I don't know if at a certain point they would say, hey, we're hosting too much of your data. I don't I don't know. And again, that's speculation. But the final piece of just the, the ugly part is just that I don't think that this is the cleanest builder. There are certain things like buttons like this that aren't centered on top of each other, different pages on the website, the pricing, having two to three different pages with different pricing and just things not lining up. And then lastly, the fact that they were pushing sales without trying to walk through how to fix problems I had reported. And then the last part, which is going to be specifically just focusing on problems, I'll open up the product hunt and other online review pages and wrap the video up by showing you why I don't personally plan to use this moving forward. All right, so we're going to go ahead and I've just gone to Google and typed in Gapsy review. When I scroll down, we're going to focus on three here. So first up is going to be Product Hunt, the second one is Trustpilot, and the third one is NoCode.Tech. Now I, do, I know I didn't cover too much in the ugly portion, and that's primarily because I haven't had a terrible experience with the platform at all. My concern is just having worked in the software industry myself, I get really concerned about the low fees and the fact that it's a one-time fee. It, it kind of feels like, and I'm speculating, but it kind of feels like they're getting a bunch of people to the platform to fund other things, which means it may not be really ready. But again, I could be wrong. It's just they're in the market for four years, and I'm just a little bit concerned by some red flags. So when we go to nocode.tech, you'll see that we have... A decent review, so three, 3.1-ish 3 stars, and you'll see they say basically the reasons are it's not super, uh, we'll explore the rating, it's not super flexible, but it's very cost-effective, ease of use, overall rating. I would agree with this rating. Now, when we go to Trustpilot, you'll see that we have bad service, and we'll continue to scroll through and you have some mixed reviews, so I wouldn't be deterred by this at all. But when I start seeing scam pretty regularly, when people are saying requested refund, buggy templates, terrible tech support, 
it's it's in there enough that I'm a little bit confused. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, that's the general ideas. Again, the concerns are mainly on the customer support and people requesting refunds, but some people giving positive reviews as well. So I'm going to leave this as it is because I noticed one of the reviews said, go over to Product Hunt. So I'll go to Product Hunt very quickly and you'll see that we have 1.3 out of 5. So <clears throat> we have two reviews that are recent, 17 total. You'll see Cool at Launch, um, Half Broken Product, and basically most of these, what I'm gathering from it, you get a lot of automated replies and you're getting a guaranteed refund, but there's nothing happening and basically just people either being unable to <clears throat> get refunds or just aren't impressed with the service. So again, you would need to look into those and kind of make the decision for yourself. The concern for me is any new app builder, if you get your, let's just say first 30 days underway, and then you start having issues, you're not going to be able to get that refund and they're, you know, you're kind of tied to that platform at that point. So I guess overall, I think this would be a solid option, I think, if you're looking to build more basic applications and you know people who have used it. So I'm going to leave this video in kind of an open-ended fashion and say, I'm not sure if this would be the, a good builder for you or not. If I had to go strictly based on first impression and ignore any and all speculation and concerns, I would definitely get this, <clears throat> get buy an account, get this application. I mean, 200 to $300 and you get a full application and you don't have to pay for any kind of storage or anything else. They have their own user management section. I mean, it's just, <clears throat> it's very nice to be able to see that. Now, I did want to make a quick note in response to some of those reviews that I showed on Product Hunt and some other websites. So I want to walk you through my journey as I'm closing out this video. So I started looking into Gapsy about two days ago from filming this video, and then I signed up for it yesterday, and then today I requested a refund. Now, I don't want that to have any bearing on you and whether or not you should or should not sign up. I want you to make the decision for yourself. Again, I don't know much about the company, where data is stored, privacy policies, any of that. And basically, I just wanted to highlight that with some of those reviews having concerns about the refund process, that's what kind of prompted me to get a refund and see if any of that's true or not. Hopefully, it can add some validity or not to those claims. So I've requested my refund. So I signed up yesterday and asked about an affiliate program and was given an email or an email response came in with a WhatsApp link. So I messaged that individual just wanting to learn more. I got some additional information on it. And I don't want to share that here because I don't want to cover too much. Um, I'm trying to keep this high level. But basically, I messaged them on WhatsApp today asking for a refund and was told they would try to process it today. And then I emailed it in as a support ticket as well. Now, the interesting thing, they do have a Freshdesk support page and they do have a knowledge base. So that is nice to see. So I do have a ticket in for that refund. I will be making a follow-up video on if I received the refund or not and what that process was like, but having received a quick response via WhatsApp, I do feel somewhat confident that I'm going to be able to get that refund without needing to, you know, go through any uh, difficult process. Now, to that point, I do want to highlight one thing. When I go in the My Account page and I go to Subscriptions, you'll see you must create at least one app in order to manage subscriptions. I am a little bit concerned about that. It means that I have to communicate with them to cancel subscriptions, which I'm not a huge fan of. Again, just trying to be a little bit cautious. I'm not going to move forward with this app builder at this time. Now, I would love to know your thoughts. I want to see if you guys could drop in the comment box below. Have you used this platform? Do you have other platforms that you like or want me to review? So let me know your thoughts and I'll see you all in the next video.